What's up, metal and heavy music fans? Today we are ranking the albums of Death Spell Omega. Quick disclaimer, there is some controversy surrounding the vocalist of this band, but I'm not going to get into it here since it's already been widely reported. Just fair warning if that's something that plays into your decision as to whether you'll listen to something. That out of the way, we're going to start right at the beginning with Infernal Battles in 2000. Now, I'm willing to bet that I'm not the only one who did not start with these albums and instead backtrack to them later since they aren't really the ones that put Deathspell Omega on the map. Not to say that these songs are bad, by any stretch, they're just pretty conventional black metal compositions on par with the likes of Satyricon and things like that. And honestly, for just running with that second wave style, it's pretty darn good. I'd even go so far as to say it's stronger than some of the classics. I'd much rather listen to this than, say, De Mysteris Dom Satanis. Solid dynamics, great transitions, icy atmosphere, it takes the blueprint and performs that to perfection, basically contains the only instances of drum machine that the band has ever used too. I want to put this one at C tier. And then we follow that up with Inquisitors of Satan in 2002, which is basically just more of that same sound. I don't really have anything special to say about it other than it's just repeating the exact same thing that I just said about the last one. I do think overall I prefer the debut if I were to pick one of them. It's a little bit punchier overall, I would say. So also going to put this one at C tier, maybe just a little bit lower since it's just kind of more of the same. All right, but now we have C Monumentum Requeris Circumspice, which I'm probably... Still not pronouncing anywhere close to correct, but this is from 2004, and this is where we really get into the meat of their discography, taking a very sudden left turn and fully forming into the more avant-garde and experimental sound we most associate with Death Spell Omega today. That mouthful of a title is based on the Latin epitaph of English architect, astronomer, and physicist Christopher Wren in the St. Paul's Cathedral that roughly translates to, if you seek his monument, look around you. This is the first in a trilogy of albums the band describe as a theological dispute on the divine essence of the devil, the roles and virtues of faith and the place of man therein, largely from a theistic Satanist perspective. It is incredibly dense and a bit of an undertaking too, at 78 minutes starting off more hypnotic, slow, and atmospheric with the first three tracks before kicking into their faster, more aggressive side with Second Prayer and Blessed Are the Dead. These alternations and pacing keep the album engaging, although I'd still argue it has less differentiation between tracks in terms of style and texturing than some of my personal favorites in their discussion. It's easy to get a little lost in it, which, to be fair, almost seems by design. Definitely more of a tumble down the rabbit hole that's best experienced if you just lay back and relinquish any sense of control, because you're not going to get it here. I don't necessarily listen to the individual tracks on this one, as it seems best taken in as a whole. It's undoubtedly an impressive work, especially at a time where not a ton of bands were doing this type of style. It really basically helped forge a new sound that so many other bands would start to follow and mark them as influences to this day. But at the same time, I personally think they surpassed this with later releases as they further honed their craft over the years with tighter, more succinct material. Those final few tracks, though, are absolutely spellbinding stuff. I'm going to put this at B tier. I know some people hold this in very high regard, but look at this scale, okay? There's a reason why there's no D tier and why there are two A tiers. <laughs> Death Spell don't have bad albums. They only have great albums and less great albums. So they followed that up with Kenosa in 2005, another title I'm probably not saying correctly. And I'm also not going to cover every side release, but there are some EPs that seem worthy of note. This definitely being a fan favorite for some, and at 36 minutes, it's as long as a lot of full-length albums out there. This is also referred to the band as kind of an appendix to the previous album, and the title is French for kenosis, which is a theological term for the self-emptying of one's own will and becoming entirely receptive to God's divine will. It's also somewhat of a pessimistic album, at least from a religious standpoint, in that it more or less makes the argument that humanity is beyond redemption. Honestly, though, a lot of the conceptual elements of all of these go way over my head, so I'm just going to stick to my feelings about the music in terms of how I rank them. It definitely steps up the eeriness and atmosphere focusing on just three lengthy tracks, and that moment where the first track suddenly transitions from the slowly building dread and melancholy into a full-on fiery assault is honestly 
pretty terrifying. The guitars are further settling into that trademark coiling serpent-like sound that they're so well known for. I'm also particularly fond of the portion around 5 minutes and 30 seconds of track 2 where they sound like some unholy undulating mass of living tissue, and then the pairing of the sort of more twinkling picking patterns against the lurching of the bass around the nine minute mark. Also the eerie discordant piano and strings with the industrial rhythm in the first portion of track three. Overall I'd put this at about the same level as the last one, but maybe just like a touch higher. And then here we go with Fas, Ite Maledicti in Ignum Aeternum in 2007. So speaking of tumbling into infinity, this album doubles down on that energy, even incorporating it into one of the best album covers of all time, in my opinion. The title is Latin for Divine Law, Go Accursed into the Everlasting Fire, from Matthew 2541. Plenty more concepts and lyrics, once more taken from French post-surrealist Georges Bataille. Sorry again if I'm mispronouncing that, I'm trying. But once more, it's a bit above my comprehension. What I do know is that I don't need a double major in philosophy and theology to tell you that this album is absolute hellfire. Like as great as those last albums are, this to me is the one where they truly get their footing. This is their message fully realized in its purest unholy form. Even the quiet, more ambient sections end up being incredibly engaging the way that they execute them. There's never that moment of waiting for the next good part to happen because everything is good. Like, I look forward to that break with the distant, harrowing chorals on the Shrine of Mad Laughter. It makes that transition back into the blast beats all the more pummeling. And speaking of which, the drumming gets insanely technical around this point for Deathspell Omega. It feels like tech death bands were bragging too much, so Deathspell said, hold my beer. Like, this is every bit as insane as stuff like Gorguts, and I can see how this has clearly inspired newer bands like Imperial Triumphant. The guitar tone on this one is also absolutely demented with those jangly tremolo sounding like a swarm of insects and reptiles coming from every direction, as well as the more high-pitched notes piercing like hot blades. You also get a more focused 46-minute experience that still works great as a full album, but also with plenty of standout tracks worth revisiting on their own. Honestly, I could go on and on with this one, and it only gets better each time I listen to it. There is not a wasted second. This is easily S-tier. Deathspell Omega. And then they followed that up with Paracletus in 2010, and this is the conclusion again of that metaphysical trilogy of God, the Devil, and Man. The title comes from the Greek word for comforter in relation to the Holy Spirit, and while it is broken into more tracks, many of them are just movements within larger, continuous works. Sonically, this is very much a continuation of the direction they went with Foss, although with more of a, like, sad-sounding melodic touch woven into it. Like, if Foss is just pure, cascading evil, Paracletus feels feels like it's driven by sorrow. Even the vocals on Abscission take a detour away from the usual demonic snarls into a style not dissimilar as on Behemoth the Satanist. Then you get even moodier passages like Dearth that delve into sludge and post-metal territory with the driving crunch of the bass and minimalist guitars, segueing into a funkier, almost deftonesy groove on Phosphine before descending once more into the Hellmouth in the second half. Honestly, I'm torn with this one because in many ways I think Paracletus actually offers more variety than Foss, and it might even be the album I'd be more likely to recommend to a newer listener since it feels at least slightly more accessible as far as Deathspell Omega goes. But on the other hand, Foss is fucking Foss. For real, I want to S-tier this one as well, but if I'm really challenging myself to actually rank them and only have two per tier, which is what I'm shooting for here, I'm going to have to go with A. Consider it like a S minus. Honestly though, y'all, like all the albums, Foss and onwards for me, like they could all at be at varying levels of S tier. But let's move on to Draught in 2012, another EP. After all of that chaos, this EP is a welcome 20 minute reprieve. Don't get me wrong, it still gets plenty aggressive, but we also get more of those drifting post metal passages as with the opener and closer in particular. And then the bass continues to get a lot of spotlight on this one with more chunky grooves to offset the more violent drums and guitars. Like seriously, the bass steals a show for a lot of the runtime on this one. Plenty of great tracks like Scorpions and Draughts that are just as strong as on the full length. Sand is also amazing, swinging back and forth like a pendulum between the chill post-metal and syncopated blasts of distortion. Abrasive Swirling Merc is a straight barn burner. Another killer release with not a dull moment that also 
might be a more accessible choice for a new listener. And I recall, I think this was one of the early things I listened to from them. I'm going to put it at A-, minus, but again, it's, it's, it's really hard for me to rank them. I think I only put it there because it's a lot easier to make a really focused 20 minutes than to carry a like 40 plus minute runtime. So these clearly get extra points for that. Then we have another shorter release in the Synarchy of Molten Bones in 2016. So as opposed to Draught, on the flip side, this one is just 20 minutes of sheer utter fucking violence. I've seen this album listed as both an LP and an EP, but regardless, it is a must listen in the discography. It also has the perfect name because it really seems so aggressive that it might actually cause physical bodily harm. After the warning of the abrasive brass intro and initial doomy lead in, this thing erupts like a volcano and basically never lets up again until the end. The drumming is even more reckless and bone breaking than ever, and I'd liken it more to something like Artificial Brain than any other black metal record out there. The instrumentation in general is just relentless, and I imagine playing these tracks live takes a serious toll on the joints. That's really all that needs to be said about this one. Like, I'm not even going to go in detail track by track. Like, this is just an utter destructive force, and I have a kind of a soft spot in my heart for it, so I think I'm going to put it at A tier. Even though it's another shorter release, I just, there's something about it that always just lingers with me. And then we have the Furnaces of Palangenesia in 2019. So I'd say of their entire discography so far, this album was the biggest grower in terms of how I felt about it initially versus how much I enjoyed it after just a few listens. Like at first, I wasn't so sure about its more slinking, insidious approach, but fast forward just a few days and it became another easy favorite of mine. They take a more kind of prophetic approach to the vocals on this one with almost more of a spoken word vibe that gives the album this haunting sermon-like feel. You feel like someone's preaching to you from like a satanic pulpit. The guitars also have this kind of uncanny and dreamlike feel and how the slower picking patterns seem almost random at times. And then we actually get a straight up head bobber in Ad Arma Ad Arma. The infectious driving groove on this one is one of the few times I dare call a death spell song catchy. And then when the brass instruments start wailing in the background, it sounds about as close to a soundtrack to the apocalypse as you can get. It picks up a bit after that with some of my favorites in the disorient mathy rhythms of splinters from your mother's spine and imitatio dai. But then I also love how tracks often just simmer right under the boiling point like renegade ashes and absolutist regeneration that not to be crass but basically edge the listener only offering those cathartic releases in small doses. And then of course there's the absolute mammoth of misery closing track you can't even find the ruins which has to be one of the most bleak and soul crushing things ever recorded. Easily one of the best albums of that entire year and another Another easy pick for S tier. And that brings us to the long defeat in 2022. So Deathspell are calling this the beginning of their third era. And this seems to be at least in part due to a change in vocalist, which given all of the stuff that's come up, it seems like a wise move on their part, probably. True to their typical low profile, though, the press release had no info on who it is or even confirming this, though Metal Archives does have Mortuous of Funeral Mist listed under session musicians. But really, that feels like the least over change when compared to the music, ditching much of the more aggressive and technical flavors of the last few albums in favor of something that feels a bit more loose and freeform. In some ways I'd say it calls back to the sound of C Monumentum, but with even more of a kind of meandering style. There are still some bursts of speed and violence here and there, but they never rise to the same level of intensity. While many other portions feel more on par with the bleak, minimalist, mournful vibes of You Can't Even Find the Ruins, which which again is a song I love within the context of that album, but here somewhat overstays its welcome without enough contrast. In terms of my favorite moments, Zizind Gerichtet is easily my favorite track with those little punctuations of backing vocals and particularly memorable drumming. This and the closer are also among the few times that I feel like the bass truly gets to shine, which was an element I previously enjoyed on almost every track. Not as much here, but that start-stop section towards the end of the former, against the plodding beat and raspy, malevolent vocals is just great. I also enjoy the eruptions of wailing guitar soloing, which makes for a nice counterpoint to the more reserved nature of everything else. There's also the cool kind of throat singing intro and eerie ambient outro of Enantiodromia, incorporating electronics, chorals, and brass, but it's almost kind of a blink and you'll miss it moment. I would have loved to hear a lot more of that. And then Our Life Is Your Death makes for a satisfying ending too, with a pretty 
varied vocal performance, and honestly, despite the change, I have the least criticism of the vocals out of anything on this album. They're honestly pretty great. Maybe even the best part of the album for me. All said and done though, I've given it several listens at this point in multiple settings, and while it has been growing on me some, it's easily my least favorite of their modern output, and definitely not an album I would recommend to a new listener for an overall impression of the band. If you're more into the slower, atmospheric side of black metal, you'll probably dig it much more than I do. In particular, I'm curious what Quest for Metal will have to say about this. For me personally though, while it's too early to drop it too low. For now, I'm actually going to move Kenose up to A-, and I'm going to put this one at a B just below C Monumentum. Y'all check out this playlist for plenty more metal ranking videos, and let me know down in the comments how would you rank these albums, where do we agree, where do we disagree, and why, and just stick around. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.